Uh, my tech talk is going to be talking about some of the markets of interest to the U.S. Uh, feed industry, some of the trends that we're seeing over the past couple of years, but also looking forward to what we might expect down the road. Two thousand eighteen was a really remarkable year for trade for two reasons. One, we saw the NAFTA agreement renegotiated. So now we have a US, Mexico, Canada trade agreement. It's not ratified yet. So we'll be looking in 2018 to see how that progresses. And I think that's a great opportunity for us to build upon the NAFTA trade agreement we've had since the mid nineties, enhance it, bring it up to speed, make it more user friendly for the way we do business. Two thousand nineteen is really going to be a year where we're building off of our momentum from twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen, we saw a, re a renegotiation of the NAFTA agreement with UM USMCA. So twenty nineteen, we're going to be really pushing for Congress to ratify that agreement so that we can reap the benefits of the new negotiated uh, trade agreement between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. In 2018, we saw the trade war come, come into play between the US and China. So 2019 is really gonna be focused on dealing with the ramica ramifications of, of those uh, the tit for tat trade war, but also ensuring that our priorities are part of those discussions and don't get left on the, um, left on the wayside. And then at the, towards the end of 2018, we also, uh, got wind of the U.S. wanting to start new bilateral trade negotiations with Japan, the EU, and UK. So 2019 is really going to be focusing on helping our negotiators understand what our priorities are for those trade negotiations and what we would like to see come out of those. Well, I can't speak specifically to how the, the tariffs have been affecting individual companies uh, within the feed industry. But what I can say is what AFIA has been doing. We've been working with uh, numerous uh, agencies in, in the U.S. government, with USDA, the U.S. Trade Representative's Office, in, in, in ensuring that our issues that were in place before the tariffs are, are part of the high-level discussions that are happening between those two countries as they navigate the current tariff issues. Because we don't, we, we see it as an opportunity, as a window to bring those issues to light to the table, but also want to make sure that, you know, once, once the tariff situation is addressed and the Section 301 concerns are, are, um, approached that our issues don't get put to the wayside. So making sure our issues are on the talking points of, of, the, of the delegations, um, that's really where we're focusing right now. You can answer as much <laughs> or as little as that right. as you want. The USMCA is really important for our industry. It is an extension of the, the NAFTA agreement, which has been in place since the mid 90s. We've, we've been able to flourish under that original agreement and the USMCA is an opportunity to enhance it, to have uh, regulatory uh, coherence and understandings between our the three countries to ensure that we are treating each other fairly, that we're cons taking uh, science into consideration uh, when when imposing new requirements on each other. And I think, you know, we're really optimistic about the agreement. I think there's a lot of value that it brings. And there, as I mentioned, there are several issues that are of concern uh, within each of the parties uh, as they individually ratify the agreement. There's a lot of pressure to move forward with ratification with uh, impending deadlines like Canada has an election coming up in October and I think think politically things can change uh, around an election and we don't want to see that negatively affect their ability to ratify. We're hearing that getting Congress to vote on ratification before June might be very difficult so we as AFIA will be 